So now we're going to cover some basic examples. Um, so first we're going to talk about the indicator function of a point. Um, so we're going to let P be some point in the interval AB. The indicator is going to be this function which we'll denote by 1 sub p and it is going to be equal to 1 if x is equal to p and 0 otherwise. Now we're going to show that, um, so show 1p is Riemann integrable on AB and that the integral is equal to zero. Okay. So the idea is that um, essentially when we uh, Let's just sort of draw a picture to get the idea, right? Let's say this is A, and this is B, and this is P, right? So the function is 1 here, and it's 0 everywhere else. So when we subdivide this interval, um, essentially, right, a, this Riemann sum, I guess I should write 1p here, oops, 1p, um, p is going to belong to, um, at most, two intervals, right? Um, it has to, it either belongs to one or two intervals of our partition, right? Um, the case where it belongs to two is where P is actually a part of our partition, so it's an endpoint of two different intervals. Um, but most of the times it's just going to belong to one, right? So uh, we have this this here. And so this is really just going to be equal to, um, right, most of these f values are going to be 0. At most, this can be, um, this can be sort of delta x sub i1 and um, Uh, sorry, there's no d there. So delta x sub i i1 and delta x sub i2. And these are less than 2 delta. Right? Assuming that our mesh is less than 2, uh, is less than delta. And um, Thus, for epsilon greater than zero, let delta be equal to epsilon over two. So, um, the Riemann sum of one P um, minus Right, the value of our integral is, well, we're claiming it's zero. Um, this is going to be um, sort of less than two delta, which is equal to epsilon. Um, and so that, in fact, proves that um, the integral is zero. Okay. 
So now let's look at some immediate corollaries of this. So let h um, be equal to zero except finitely many points. Um, show that the integral of h of x is zero. So the idea here is that um, h is equal to some um, some linear combination of indicator functions. And so since the integral is a linear function, um, we know that this is going to be um, the sum of these, the sum of cj times the integral of our partition functions, or not partition functions, um, indicator functions. And each of these integrals is equal to zero, so we have a sum of zeros, and so this is zero. Okay. Um, as another corollary, let g be equal to f, except finitely many points. Um, then, well, we can just go ahead and say um, then g minus f of x can play the role here of h, right? Because g minus f is going to be a function which is zero, except finitely many points. So this is zero, um, but this is equal to, of course, since the integral is linear, this is equal to the integral of g minus the integral of f, so the integral of g is equal to the integral of f. Okay, so that concludes sort of that set of examples. Um, the next sort of um, example is um, let f of x be greater than or equal to zero, right? Then the integral of f of x is going to be greater than or equal to zero. Um, and so we're going to sort of approach this proof in a contradiction way. Um, so let L equal the integral. Assume L is less than zero and then let epsilon be less than, um, well, bigger than zero, but less than minus L, which is positive. Then, um, um, there is, Right, some corresponding delta such that whenever the mesh of our partition is less than delta, um, the Riemann sum minus L is less than epsilon, right? But uh, this means that um, let's see. But this value um, is ah, so. The Riemann 
sum here. Okay, the Riemann sum. Um, the delta x's are non-negative. In fact, they're always positive, but they're non-negative. And our function values, our f values, are also non-negative. And so this Riemann sum must be non-negative. Um, and so that means that This is um, less than or equal to let's see, so this is absolute value of L. Uh, this is Let's see. Ah, no. So this is greater than or equal to the absolute value of the absolute value of p. I'm just going to shorthand it for now. Minus. the absolute value of L. Okay, so we know this partition value is non-negative, so we can drop the absolute values here. Um, Let's see. I know I can get a contradiction this way. I'm just lacking the right method. Because I know that, um, right, let's draw a picture, right? If I have the number line, I know L is over here. It's less than, um, sorry, it's less than zero. L is over here, and P is over here, okay? So I know that the distance between P and F has to be greater than the distance between 0 and L. Because L is less than 0, it's less than P of F. Less than or equal to. And this is this quantity, absolute, this is the absolute value of L, and this is greater than epsilon. So this is a contradiction. Okay. Um, so I knew I was missing some simple step there. And um, 
as an immediate corollary, you can show that if f is less than or equal to g, then the integral of f is less than or equal to the integral of g, right? And you can sort of prove this in a similar way that we proved this part right here, and just say that the integral of g minus f must be greater than or equal to zero, and so you can add the integral of f on both sides and get the result. Okay, so I spent more time there than I wanted to. Um, but I'll just keep going anyway. So the next thing we're going to do is talk about step functions. So sigma is a um, step function. on our interval a b if um, there exists some partition um, which we just use the standard notation such that sigma is constant equal to c sub i on the intervals of our partition. Now we want to prove, um, in fact, actually, um, um, they're constant on the open intervals. They can take on any value at the endpoints uh, because there's finitely many of them. Um, and so this won't affect the integral as we've seen before. Um, so we want to show that sigma is Riemann integrable. And furthermore, we want to show that the um, integral of sigma is um, is the sum, so i goes from 1 to n, of the c sub i, um, essentially just times delta x i. And the proof is very straightforward um, because we know that um, I can split up this interval a, b um, from the second theorem last time, this is a sum. I can split it up and then we know that on each of these intervals um, sigma of x is constant, so I can replace this by c sub i, and then we have already shown that the integral of a constant function is just the constant times the length of the interval, which is exactly delta x i. Okay, so that's pretty straightforward. The next thing we want to show is that if m is less than or equal to f is less than or equal to m, uh, so these are just real numbers, then m times b minus a is less than or equal to the integral of f. This is less than or equal to the um, big M times b minus a. And the proof of this is uh, fairly straightforward, right? We can say that the integral of f of x minus m is greater than or equal to zero because this function is greater than or equal to zero. And um, so the integral of f 
is greater than or equal to the integral of m, which we know is just that. And the proof in the other direction is just as simple, where we take big M minus f of x dx is greater than or equal to zero. So um, this quantity, which is equal to the integral big M is greater than or equal to the integral of f. Okay. Now the last result I want to prove is um, connecting sort of, uh, this is maybe how you've seen Riemann sums in a calculus class. Um, use k here. One to n f of a plus k times b minus a over n. So the limit as n goes to infinity of this expression is equal to the integral of f. Okay, so we're going to prove this, and the proof is fairly straightforward, right? We have a limit. So, um, you know, and we, and we want to show the limit is equal to some value. So we're going to set L equal to the Riemann integral. Um, let epsilon be greater than zero. Okay. Then the first thing we can do, really the only thing we can do, um, is say there's delta such that Whenever we have a partition of mesh less than delta, um, the Riemann sums over the partition are epsilon away from L. Um, by the um, arc. Um, Archimedean property of R, let N be big enough um, so that N is bigger than B minus A over delta. Okay. Um, so wait, uh, yeah, so the quantity B over A over N or B minus A over N is less than Delta. Then the partition um, formed by just the arithmetic sequence just by taking a and then adding b over a minus n right. and then the xn value is a plus n times b minus a over n, the n's cancel, a plus b minus a is b. Um, oops. This is a partition with mesh um, the mesh is exactly equal to b minus a over n and this quantity is less than delta by construction of n. Um, furthermore, let the evaluation points be equal to a plus i times b minus a over n. Um, you can check that these evaluation points lie in the 
proper intervals. Um, in fact, they're they're always endpoints. Um, thus, the partition here satisfies this. Um, and this Riemann sum is exactly the left-hand side um, so this is k equals 1 to n f of remember our evaluation points are a plus k times b minus a over n and our delta x um, the delta x values are always b minus a over n, so we could pull that out of the sum. And um, therefore, we have proved this limit because we found for n large enough, um, we for any epsilon, we can pick an n large enough such that this quantity is um, within epsilon of L, which is the integral of f. Um, so that concludes that. And um, uh, so next time we're just going to continue on with more properties of integration.